Hey folks, Dave back here in Studio B, and I want to talk a little bit today about this new Hockey Bones Excel Flipper Helper, whatever you want to call it, that I stumbled on the other day. I played around with it a little bit, and I was like, yeah, it's okay. And then myself and Ron uh, decided, he, Ron bought Hockey Bones, so we wanted to give it a try. So we were really trying to make it work. So he had the Excel Flipper, and I was kind of helping him with the cards and the whole bit, and it just works and then as soon as we were done i says i need to go play a game of hockey bones with this flipper myself and see how it goes and this game this flipper makes this game move okay i played a period i was playing so fast now usually a game of hockey bones a period will take me between a half hour and 45 minutes that's what i usually take to play hockey bones a lot of times I'm distracted and I get a drink and I check on the dog or, you know, whatever. I'm not go, 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 go. Uh, but but still, with all the dice rolls and the whole bit, it'll take me a half hour. When I play in the Summit Series, it was 40 minutes a period. Don't know why, it just was. Last night I was playing and I got this game to play in 19 minutes and 41 seconds for the third period. So that being said... You know, if I could buckle down and just use this this helper here, I could get through a game in an hour. So if I could shave a half hour to 45 minutes or even an hour off my game time, I would absolutely play way more hockey bone. So where can you find find as far as shows up? Hi, Forrest. Thanks for coming by. As I'm just showing off here this new thing that I found. So where can you find it? All right. So you can find it here. Okay. So if you go to the hockey bones website which is sports.ptgamesinc.com. All righty. Just search PT Games Hockey Bones, and it'll bring you right up here. So while you're on this main page, if you click on the PT Games Freebies, okay, it's going to bring you here. And under Dice Roller Fact Flippers, you're going to get the Face Off Hockey Bones Dice Roller by Keith Wright. And it's HB Roller PT. And this is a zip file, and it's going to unzip the helper as well as the um, the uh, the Word doc that shows you how to use it, okay? So that's where you get it. What it looks like, okay? What it looks like is this. So I need to bring this up now and bring up my thing here. This is what it looks like, okay? This is what the helper is. All it really does, and I mean all it really does, is it rolls almost, I think, as many rolls as you might need on a segment. They're all done in one swoop, okay? I figured out today that when you're playing Hockey Bones, you could have eight rolls to solve a play, okay? And that's one 24-minute segment. So you roll, so you got your initial roll. If it's a shot on net, you got the shot. If it's a save and a rebound, there's three. You check your clearing rating on the rebound. If it's another shot, you got a second shot. Then you check the goalie rating again. So that's six. If it's a goal, you need to roll for how many assists and then who gets the assist. So there's eight. Eight. So there's eight rolls potentially to solve a 24-second span of hockey bones. I don't mind it. I enjoy it. You know, this game is really fun now that I've, I've buckled down and played it. But that's a lot of rolling. In fact, I have really, really bad tendonitis in both of my arms from playing hockey. So when I went on that binge of playing uh, that 76 Buccaneers football product, and then I went on the eight-game Summit Series, and I was picking up dice and dropping them and dropping them into the dice tower, oh, I aggravated my arms so bad. My tendonitis flared up so bad. I couldn't figure out what it was. It was from picking up the dice for hours and hours. I played so many games in a row every night I was playing this. This will allow me to not roll any more dice and hurt my arm, okay? You still can. You still can roll dice if you want to, but this gets rid of it. So let me show you what it does. So the top section is your roll. That's your initial roll in Hockey Bones. That might solve everything. If it's a turnover or face off or whatever it is, that one roll might be all you need. If you need more, if it's a shot on net, down below here, it gives you the shot. If I can make it highlight here. So it gives you the shot over here. 
know if I can see that or not. Next to that, it'll give you the save from the goalie. And if it happens to be a rebound, it gives you the clearing rating. And what is terrific about this clearing rating here is a lot of times I actually forget to check for the clearing rating on a rebound. It's just there's so many little things in hockey bones like this, none of them difficult, but there's so many little things that this is a great reminder to check for the clear. So I love having this here. And then if there's a, if it is not cleared and it's a rebound shot, you have your second shot and then your second save. And so there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the six that it would take. So if you scored on a rebound goal, you need those six. Then you need two more for the assist. So this eliminates all those roles. So last night I was playing and I would hit the dice. So if you hit the dice here, right, you roll the dice and it gives you your roll and then your shot rating. And it also, you see the yellow three on the shot rating. It also will highlight any of the potential block numbers, which is fantastic. Because, again, sometimes I forget to check for a block. So the two things I forget to check are block and clearing ratings. And that's going to remind me here in this helper to do that. So you got your initial roll. If it's a shot, you get your shot. You get your save roll, your clear roll. All the extra rolls are here. Now, down over here, this penalty roll here, that used to say who. And I'm not sure what the who was supposed to be for. So what I did is I changed that to penalty. So if I get a penalty... I have my penalty roll all set. Now, it also has an extra roll one and an extra roll two. So it's basically rolling your 1d6 blue, 2d6 white, and 1d6 red. So it's rolling your red, your four dice for you. It also gives you the face off up here, right? So if I roll visitor left D, offense, I mean, home left D, unless there's an AA face off rating. Left wing, home, unless there's an A face-off rating. So you're getting all your rolls here. It's unbelievable. And it counts down your shifts. So now we're at shift zero, and we got to change lines. And I'll get into that in one second. But it, it, so it gives you all your rolls. So, so I roll this here, 282. I look at my card. It tells me what happens. If it's a shot, I have the shot ratings. That's out of range with a six. I go to the goalie card, three, five. What's a save? Okay, here's this and that. I just follow along with the dice rolls here. And I never really thought I would like something like this. I, I always I always thought that I would want to roll my own dice all the time and this and that and the other thing. But a game like Hockey Bones where it takes a long time to play and there's a lot of dice rolls, a lot of picking up the dice and dropping them in the tower there, this eliminates all that and – I I'm, I enjoyed it last night when I was able to play a game of a period in 19 minutes, 19 minutes, a period of hockey bones, 1941. That was, that was unbelievable. It really was. So what else does this thing do? Aside from remind you to check for the clear after the rebound and, and also remind you about block shots. There's a few other things it does. If you look in the, uh, the bottom left corner of the, the top there in that main square with the, die, the the red die, it's got assists in there, okay? And it's also got your retaliatory number on penalties. So that assist, how, how you do hockey bones assist is there's a, a, is an assist grid or chart, if you will. You roll three dice, so you get um, you know the, the blue and the two whites, and so it's like column five, eight. So five, eight, it'll say zero, one, or two. So it'll say... Zero assist, one assist, or two assist, okay? Then you roll again, and off the same chart, now you look to the right of that um, that number. You see the assist here at two hyphen, or, or whatever that is, uh, two slash three, four. So you would roll, and you would get to two, and then you'd roll again and see what you would come up with here. What they've done here is the, ass the assists, how many assists and who gets them are all independent. So you don't need to roll again. It, it's I just read that in the instructions. It, I was like, oh, I wonder if I have to roll twice for the assist. Nope, it's there. So it's two assists, and it's the third highest and the fourth highest, which is the top two assist getters on the line. Those who's getting your assist. It's all there. So you you never have to roll again. You, you, you hit that red button. So you come over here. You hit the red button, and boom. You're, you're, all your rolling is done, whatever you're going to need. The only time you would need to roll again is on the power play, okay? Because there is a, a a rule on the power play that if it's uh, a pass, first pass on a power play does not take any time, okay? And if it's intercepted and it's a red six, then the power play team hangs on to it and it's no time. So then you would go to the no time roll. So if you're on the power play here, you go to the no time roll, you get all new results here without 
moving the time. Okay, so that's what's really cool about that. Now, uh, as far as changing score, it's just change the score, zeros. You know, I'm gonna go a new period. I'm gonna go period one. All right, and we start the game all over again. It even reminds you to check for bench miners at the beginning of the period. You don't know how how damn cool that is. <laughs> how many times do you for check check? We forget to check for bench miners at the start of the period. Yep, that would be me. I forget all the time to check for bench miners as our Red Sox fan joins us here. And so it reminds you of all the things that you forget. It so it not only is it rolling the dice for you, it gives you the face off right off the bat. It keeps the time of the game. So if I come over here back to the spreadsheet, so I roll the dice here. So I'm in the first period. So 24 seconds comes off the clock. What happens during that 24 seconds while well, all these dice rolls are going to tell you? It even down the bottom here, for stat geeks like myself, way down the bottom left, it says the exact time. So even though it's a 24 segment, it also gives you an exact time to find out exactly when this happens. So let's just say there was a penalty or even a goal. That's going to happen nine seconds into the period. So not everything happens at the at the 24-second mark, if you follow me. We're doing a 24-second segment. What happens in that segment? And if you want to get all geeky, it gives you an exact time. It also gives you the, on the right side, it gives you the exact time chart if you'd like to roll. And from there, there is a formula that you would use to figure out the exact time. But it gives you it here automatically. That is so cool. It gives you so it gives you the dice rolls. It gives you the face off. It gives it has a shows you the block shot results, the block shot results. Again, that's the chart for the block shots. It tells you the penalty types. If you've got a penalty, you don't even have to go any further. It tells you what they are. The clearing rating. It shows you what your defensive rating is and and you know if what the clearing rating is for the roll. And it even tells you that if you have a S. On the offense, you subtract one from the defensive clear rating. So everything reminds you right here. It talks about the shot conditions, okay? It tells you about empty nets, you know? Uh, and then the, it's got the injury chart. So if there's an injury, there it is right there. So it just, everything is here. Everything that I would need to go to is here in the program, okay? Also, as you can tell, I'm, I'm excited about this, okay? Because not only is it a dice roller and a helper and keep score, it also has all your pertinent information that you might need. So your defense table, okay? So your normal defense, it tells you right there at the bottom. If it's five on five, it tells you, you know, left wing or right D, or left wing or the left D has the puck. This is who you're checking for defense. There is also an adjustment for the center that it shows. If you're on the penalty kill, they highlighted that in blue. Basically, you divide by two and round down if it's a fraction. So if your defense was 10 on the penalty kill, it, it, as you see, it's a five. If it's a nine, it, it rounds down to four. So your team defense chart is here. You know, who are you going up against chart is here. Your injury chart is here. Your block shots, your clear, your penalty types. Everything is here on the spreadsheet. In fact, you could even add notes if you wanted to. It just spells it all out for you. The... Other super unbelievably cool thing is the lines. Now, as you know, I have my little um, things I made up. They're, they're basically raffle tickets. But I have um, 10, 10 different uh, cards. And they're, they're labeled line one, line two, and line three with more line one than line two and more than line two than line three. And then if I have line four, line four usually gets one shift a period. So I would flip those on my table, right? This, this right here gives you your lines so you don't have to do that. I've now taken those things and put them off to the side if I use this. I don't need to do that anymore. Okay, in fact, I might even use this if I'm playing if I'm playing APA. I might even think about using this helper just to keep track of my lines. And let me show you how that works. So over here, you have lines available, away and home. And so you get forward one, forward two, forward three, forward four, and then also D1, two, and three. Okay, so that's what we have here. You now can specify how many shifts each each line gets. Now in the game on the cards, there's a shift rating. So if you wanna be a stickler about it, in the instructions on how to use this, it tells you to add the three for the forwards, add the three forwards up their line, uh, I guess it would be line usage or shifts per game. 
add that up and divide by um, three. So let's just say it was nine, nine, and nine. That's 27. It's going to be nine. So, so basically, that's nine shifts per game. Now, some guys get 10 shifts per game, and some guys get six. So let's just say you had line three, and they were all around five, six, or seven shifts a game. Well, you factor in there. So you can come over here and say, okay, I want my forward line one. I think I was playing them. I think I was playing them 12 shifts, and these guys were getting nine. And then the third line might get six, and then the fourth line might get three. So I think you want to add that up to, I think you want to get it up to 30 or 31, because there's going to be basically 30 different line changes in the game. Every two minutes, you change a line, 10 per period, 30 per game. So you want to get that up as close to 30 as possible. And same for the D. Now, what I do with the D is I, as I really, um, I play the crap out of the first line. So they're going to get at least 12. These guys might get 10 and these guys might get just six shifts a game, a couple of period. Now I might need to bump that up because that's not 30. So I'm going to go, how about 15? So D1 is going to get 15 shifts. They're going to play a lot of minutes and D2 will get 10 and D3 is going to get six. Sounds confusing, but all you're doing is letting this helper know how many shifts you want them to take. So I'm going to do the same for, for each. I'm going to line them up here. Nine, six, three, 15. 10 and six. And what was neat is when I did my test last night, I didn't have a line four. So for line four, I put zero and I just increased these guys one each. Okay. So I'll put that back to three. So now starting our game, let's start a new period. All right. Just, for, just for kick. So we're going to start the game here. So here we go. We're starting the game, 20 minutes on the clock, check for bench miners. We're set to go. All our lines are here, and it gives you lines to start the game. Now, again, you can change around here. Believe I believe you can change it. To, ooh, yep, I think we, so if I want to go line one and one, there we go. So we have line one and line one out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the computer or tell the spreadsheet that I'm having line one start the game, right? And then I hit minus one. And then watch what's going to happen. This 12 is going to turn to an 11. And the 15s will turn to 14s. See that? So now I've already registered one out of their 12 shifts during the game. And the computer will alternate. It is really cool. So we drop the puck. Now ignore these lines for right now. We really don't need to do anything with that. And oh no, you know something? I think I messed up. I don't think I was supposed to touch these. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I was supposed to touch those. Because that's um yeah, that's not changing. I, I wasn't supposed to touch those. So anyway, but uh, it, it so let me don't say that. Hopefully I didn't wreck it. Um, but anyway, um, so you would subtract it and it would subtract the lines. So don't touch the lines. I got to go back in and fix that. So, so whatever you do, don't don't touch those lines. Just let that. That's part of a formula. So hopefully I didn't mess it up. <laughs> no, I didn't. I went back and, and checked it up. Yeah, we're fine now. So anyway, so you do that. And um Every time you change lines, you come over to that area and you tell it that here's, here's who's in and here's my lines now. You hit the minus button and it subtracts it and it never doubles. Okay. My, in my game, I would flip and I would double. I had line one, play a lot of line two, whatever. This game will never double up. So if you have line one forward and line 2D, your next line is going to be different. It will never be the same. You know, you'll never have line one back to back on the offensive line, two back-to-back -back on the defense. It mixes it up. It does an unbelievable job. Yeah, no, I I, uh, I don't, yeah, I, I screwed that up. Yeah, JT, I, I shouldn't have touched that. So I, I didn't save it, so I just went back and opened it up again. Um, But anyway, that's just, it's pretty amazing. It, it's just how you do that here. It's, um, it's really kind of cool. I just don't know how to reset the whole thing here. That, that's, that was my thing is I didn't know how to reset everything. But I just love how you can do that with the lines here. And I'm just going to put this back real quick and show you again. So I'll come back one more time and show you this here now that I screwed it up. Don't do that. Okay, that's one. <laughs> here we go. Don't do that. I'll go back here one more time. Okay, so I put everything back. You can change the period. So you can change the period and the score here by yourself. But don't change anything else. So we're back to period one. Check for bench minus. Here we go. 
So I have one and three. Now, what you could do is you could actually do a no time roll until you get one and one if you want to start the game like that. Or, or I think now that I, now that I think of it, um, all you have to do is put in line one. I don't think you, that's just a suggestion. So I don't even think you need to worry about it. As long as you log in line one here and hit your minus button, that's going to indicate to the game that line one is out on the ice. And we're going to start the game here. So now as you're going to see, it suggests the next lines, and it's never going to be one until you change this. So we're playing the game. It's a turnover. Playing the game goes out of play. Playing the game, shot, save, whatever. You know. So now we're at the end of the shift, and now we get to change lines. So we f we, we finish it out, shot and a save, face off, or whatever it is. So now we need to change lines. So it's suggesting line four and three for the offense. So line four. In line, um, yeah, uh, four offense, three defense for the away team, and then three and two for the home team. Hit minus one, and now you can see that line four for the away team only has two shifts left in the game because I only gave them a total of three in the game. So now you stop playing, and if you notice here, you cannot go back to back, so this will never repeat as a line four, no matter how many times I flick here. I will not get line four in my offense on the visiting team because they're on the ice. So not only does it allow you to uh, keep track of how many shifts they get, it won't double up. I, I think that's pretty amazing. I do. Uh, honestly, I, I, I think that's pretty darn amazing that it does that. It really does. And uh, so I just wanted to show that off. And again, go to, let me show you where, where I found the game. Or the the helper, I should say. So we're gonna it's it's over here at at um, PT Games freebies. So if you go to PT Games, just search PT Games Hockey Bones. Go to the freebies. Scroll down under the dice fact flippers, and it's right below the Lewis dice rollers. It's the face off hockey bones dice roller by Keith Wright. In fact, we should try to get Keith Wright on the show <laughs> because it was that's how good this is. It. The, the only thing I wish it did, and again, I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining, but if it kept the stats, like the shootout hockey helper, that would be unbelievable. To keep the stats and shoot out a box score or something, that would be nice. Um, but what this does is it rolls all your dice rolls. All your dice rolls are rolled at once. So when I was doing the game, I had it here on my table. What's the roll? It's this. Okay, who gets the face off? This guy gets the face off. Puck goes here. What's the roll? The roll is this. What does this card say? Oh, it's going to be a potential shot on net. Yes, it is. Here's the shot. Oh, not in range. Goalie makes a save. What's the goalie save thing? Here's that. What does the puck go? It was so fun and so fast. I wasn't picking up and rolling. Now, the, the one thing I will say, I, I do, I do kind of miss rolling the dice because I love rolling the dice, as we all do. That's why we play on the table is to roll the dice. That was missed a little bit. And I know that, you know, we all have this stigma about computer dice rolls and how random are they really, blah, 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 blah. So I, I, I do miss the, the, the rolling of the dice. Now, if you wanted to, you could. So if you played this game, you say, hey, every shot, I'm going to draw my own dice in there, but I'm going to use this for face off the initial roll or whatever. You can. You can mix and match all you want. This just gives you all the dice rolls for that segment all in one. And you just go down the line and follow what you need, including the penalty one and even the assist. It just saves so much time from rolling dice. Again, assists are two dice rolls. Here, it's already on the screen. I don't have to roll. I don't have to look. So you still can roll the dice if you want. In fact, you can hit the no time roll on there and roll all the dice again. So if you, you didn't want to follow the chain, if you wanted just to use that one dice roll, you can click on it. Click on that, roll the dice. Click on that, roll the dice. But this here, I, I'm telling you, I shaved. I played this that third period, which I had three goals and two or three penalties. So it wasn't like a fast period. It was a normal period. And, and Montreal had like 18 shots on net. So I had to stop, you know, to keep looking at the shots on net. That easily shaved. 10 to 20 to 25 minutes per period off of playing hockey bones. That's what it is. So, so again, if, if you, you know, this might not be for everyone. If you're a stickler on rolling your own dice, then this is not for you. Then you probably don't want anything to do with computers. You just want to roll the dice on the table. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it at all. I'm just saying 
that for me, I enjoy playing hockey bones, but you know, an hour and a half to two hours for one game, that is a long time. It really is. Okay. So if I knew I could play a game in an hour, do you know how many more projects I would be attempting and how many more playoffs and how many more games I'll be doing if I could do it in an hour? You know, I hit that thing there. It keeps track of my lines and the whole bit. I don't have to worry about anything. You know, that that would be that would be unbelievable. It really would. I would really like to uh you know, I I would I would like that a lot. You know what I mean? Just save the time, play the game. And if I wanted to, I could stop and roll the dice at any time. You know, so it's available. So um so I just wanted to show this off. It's available for free. Um, I played this last night. I was amazed at how fast the game went. Not that it's a race, but again, shaving time off a of gameplay. And I don't felt I lost uh I don't think I lost any of the enjoyment of playing that that game last night. It was just instead of rolling the dice, I just looked up at the screen. What is the predetermined dice? So it's almost like if you had someone rolling dice for you, you know, and you looked at it. And again, I love rolling my dice and I still do. Um, but but you know, again, hockey bones, you're rolling. What do we what do we factor? There was um so you're rolling every 24 seconds. So you're rolling 50 per period. So that's 150 minimum rolls per game to play a game of hockey bones. And that's if you don't get any shots or any penalties. That's just rolling the dice and losing the puck over and over and over again, which doesn't happen. So a minimum of I believe 150 rolls. So this is gonna save a, a lot of time doing the rolls. And so, again, not for everyone, but if you play Hockey Bones and you want to streamline it and have have a way to do your, your lines, this will do your lines. It'll roll your dice. It has all the information on the screen to remind you about things. That's what's so great about this. Remind you about clearings. Remind you about block shots. You know, remind you about bench minus at the beginning of the period. All the things that I have my little notes over here for, it's, it's all on the screen. It's like, oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. So. Um, so yeah, so thanks for everybody that tuned in. I just was just jumped on this afternoon real quick before I have to go to work tonight to show that off. But, um, I played one game last night and I, I did miss rolling the dice, but at the same time, I don't feel I missed out on anything of the gaming experience at all. And it, it just, it just sped things up is what it did. It sped things up, not to a point where I didn't enjoy the game. It didn't race through the game, but it's just nice knowing that, okay, this guy's got the puck. Okay. What's the role here? Oh, it's going to be this. Okay. Well, what's, what's the next dice roll say, you know? So instead of picking up and dropping, you know, hundreds of times, because that's what it is, the, the whole segments right there. So, and yeah. And JT says, you know, the lines and remind is worth it. Even if he rolls his own dice. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, this is something where, you know, I can see if I, you know, if my, my, my arms ever got, got better, if the tendonitis went away, um, I could see myself using this, roll my own dice, ignore what's on the screen, uh, but I'd use it to keep my lines and just kind of remind me about everything. Because, again, there's a lot of stuff on the chart that I have that's on here. And so there's a few more things I, I might add, you know, to that as well. Uh, but uh, as you know, I, I like, my cards and dice, but I also like my helpers. I like a nice combination of the two because I think it really helps a game. Um, cards and dice are nice and fun. It's it's very intimate and very raw. But if you can get a helper to help you out, that's what they're there for, to help you out. So anyway, hope you like this video here. Let me know if you use this. Let me know if you don't. That's fine. It's not for everyone. I get it. But if you're playing Hockey Bones, this makes the game, it just speeds it up. And there's a lot of, I don't want to say unnecessary rolling in the game because that's not fair to say but if if you can roll eight eight dice rolls all at once you get the results a heck of a lot faster you can get through more games and and, and that that's you know that's what it's designed for so anyway, hey i'm dave from studio b and um you'll be seeing some more hockey bones here on the channel as well so uh, we'll talk to everybody later thanks for tuning in have a good afternoon and bye-bye